This is Twit. So Pluton is a joint venture of Intel, AMD, Qualcomm, and Microsoft, right? All of them. Which, by the way, is the most impressive thing about this, it I is. think. It is. I know. But we'll get to that. Yeah. We'll get to that. Um, and it's, all I know is it's a security architecture. Is it a whole new kind of chip? Or is it just an architecture and existing chips? What is Pluton? I know. So you see some people calling it a brand new chip. But actually, I think it's an addition to the CPU. It's That's it's true. not... Yeah. Right, it's not just so a chip. It was it's like a whole architecture. It was likened to Microsoft, uh, Apple's T2 chip, which is an it ARM. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be actually. It shouldn't so, be either. That's something else. No, it's better. Okay. It's better than that. So the T2 is like what TPM was right. back in the early 2000s. A dedicated right? so processor it, for a secure enclave that's right. and generation of security keys, mm -hmm. things like that, storage and generation. Yeah. So what Microsoft has discovered is that because that chipset is so secure, hackers are trying to work around it by finding vulnerabilities elsewhere. And one of the places they found those vulnerabilities is on the bus between the CPU and oh, the TPM. Wow. Oh, wow. So what this does is it moves the security chipset, which is, I would call it, I mean, I don't actually know. I, I, I would assume it's an evolved version of TPM slash whatever the Xbox security chip was. They moved it onto the chip, uh, the actual CPU chipset. So it's inside the CPU. So you don't have to worry about it going across the bus unencrypted. It's, right. It never gets on the bus. But that's mm -hmm. why it's impressive because Microsoft doesn't make any CPUs. <laughs> so they've actually right. convinced mm -hmm. Intel, AMD, and Qualcomm, the three companies that do make CPUs on which Microsoft's platforms run, or desktop platforms anyways and uh they've all agreed to do it so is this would you would you categorize this as a system on a chip micro I mean, apple it's a system it, in a chip in a chip yeah. <laughs> it's a no, sick not a sock yeah. yeah like system a on a chip a design is what people are calling it right system on a chip yeah yeah, I mean, we've been, we, you know, th in mobile, that's what it always is, is a system on a chip. Mm -hmm. You're putting more and more functionality into the chip. Right. That's right. Um, because you don't have any space, so <laughs> it makes sense. You don't mm -hmm. have room for a big logic board. Um, mm -hmm. But there hasn't been that pressure on desktop computing. But Not for space reasons, but for security reasons. For security reasons, it makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. Yep. Actually, that's a first it, step know, toward what Apple's doing with memory, because memory is also on chip. This mm. uh, unified memory architecture, which is something Xbox mm. does and has done since the mm -hmm. beginning. But um, I wonder if that's... It's going to be more efficient. You know, yeah. obviously, if the, yeah. the RAM is on board, it's faster. I wonder if that's the, the yeah. a step in that direction. So it'll be for Intel chips and Qualcomm chips. And AMD. Mm -hmm. And AMD chips. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Should you... When uh, I first heard about it, I, I was thinking... we. I've heard this code name or name before, and I had because Microsoft used Pluton when they were talking to us about Azure Sphere, which was their Linux microcontroller yeah. and security system for IoT. And I, I went back and looked at the coverage, and we called Pluton then an onboard security subsystem. And that was on the MediaTek MT3620 chip, right, which – is the microcontroller they're using inside of Azure Sphere. So actually that sounds like the same kind of... Mm -hmm. Concept, uh, right? Not really an architecture, but the a design or whatever. Yeah. It's, in, it's interesting because The Verge said it's Xbox-like security for Windows PCs. Which, yeah. Well, because they did something like this on Xbox. Right. Yeah. yeah. But they also do it on most smartphones. Samsung does it. Uh, well, mm -hmm. Microsoft doesn't really have that capability, right? So... Right. They don't have a smartphone, so yeah. this is for Microsoft. The pre you know the predecessor on the PC is TPM, but the predecessor from a sort of design standpoint, where it's actually on chip with the CPU, right, uh, has is Xbox and and the uh, Azure Sphere that Mary Jo mentioned. And and the reason it sounds familiar to you, of course, is because as you know, it's an igneous intrusion or an intrusive igneous rock that forms by crystallization from the magma slowly cooling beneath well, the surface. See, I was going to say. It's another thing that's not a planet. <laughs> <laughs> a Pluton is actually a little a squirt of igneous rock. Okay. But um, oh, and there's all, we also should say should say this is not just about PCs and IoT devices, but also servers too, because um, it complements the work Microsoft's been doing with the Open Compute Project around projects Cerberus. Is that how you say that? 
C E R B E R U S. Kerberos. Kerberos. Oh, Kerberos. Oh, Kerberos. I, right. like, I, I think I said this wrong the last time. Yeah, too. okay. Kerberos. Yeah, it's, the, it's the dog um, that guards the, the that's right. door of Hades. That's right. yeah. Like multi headed dog, yes. right? Yeah. Right. So there, there's Cer- also a Cerberus server angle to Ker- this. Kerberos, depending <laughs> on your Latin. Yeah. It's actually yep. Greek. Yeah. <laughs> the multi headed hound of Hades. Thank you very much. Well, it's such a good code name, right? <laughs> Kerberos is such a good name. Who doesn't name. want to be the dog? It's not, in not front like of a Hades. heavy metal band name. <laughs> <laughs> but Kerberos is also a, a security protocol, I guess. Uh, mm. And so it's mm. a good. That's a. For people who are into security, that says, oh, good. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ker- they Kerberos. Also, um, yeah. Kerberos. Okay. Yeah. Um, they made references to this new processor architecture also affecting how they patch things, right? They talked about it um, helping to make patches more like they currently are on Windows, but more regular and more reg- and more regulated by Microsoft. So that's going to be interesting how that plays that's a out. Right? Alarming. <laughs> yeah. I know. So if you, I know. If some modern PCs, you can actually get a BIOS update through a Windows update. And I assume that it's that yeah. sort of a thing, like a firmware type update. It is, yeah. Uh, Firmware patching um, to for many sources brought together so that it's authored, maintained, and updated by Microsoft is what they said. So, yeah. Right. Hopefully it goes better than Patch Tuesdays have gone. Left we'll field see. question, probably unknown. Mm-hmm. Um, you, can, you can uh, install Linux on a PC because you can turn off secure boot. Yeah, this is the yeah. <laughs> yeah, here we go. I know. Oh. <laughs> so did they address so that? The I, I, they haven't said that. Yeah. But uh, given history and given the fact that Microsoft isn't the only customer for like these are going to be in mainstream chips, right? I don't, I don't think mm-hmm. what we're going to see is a special variant of a Core i five or whatever that only ships in Windows based PCs, right? You can I, get I, non TPM PCs though, so. It's okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's just from Intel's perspective, it seems like what you they would do is let you in the yeah. firmware turn it off. Yeah. But I, uh, yeah, no, Microsoft has not addressed that. 